welcome back yet to another webinar by REACH Law, this time on the topic of uh, South Korea K-REACH, and uh, more specifically looking at the uh, 2024 registration deadline. Albeit actually this presentation or this webinar will be a, really an overview of the uh, K-REACH regulation and, and then with a twist of, of looking at the 2024 registration deadline. So much more. Uh, Today we have two presenters, uh, myself, Fredrik Johansson, I'm a partner here at REACH Law, head of sales, uh, long-standing uh, uh, background in, in uh, ke chemical regulations and, uh, and uh, happy to be here. And of course, working with EU REACH and, and K -Re uh, K uh, KKDRK and uh, UK REACH and so forth, other REACHs for many years, but now also working with K REACH. So Gaga, do you want to present yourself also, please? <laughs> yes, thank you, Frederick. So my name is Gagan Kumar, as you see. I'm based out of New Delhi, which is uh, Reach Law India Private Limited. So it's our own uh, subsidiary where I'm, I'm located. And I'm also um, having uh, experience in Reach and Reach-like regulations. It's actually my passion to work and understand these regulations. And since I'm Part of this country, so I have some interest also how the reach is developing in in in, for example, Korea and and other countries. So this is also I'm happy to share uh, our experience and uh, know how to support you with this session. Thank you. Thank you, Gagan. Okay, so as usually. Uh, just some practical information about the webinar so you can use the, the chat function to submit questions we've already received some questions ahead of the the uh the webinar as part of the registration form so we'll uh, cover those as far as possible and then of course if you have a lot of questions uh, we'll, we'll try to go through those as much as possible but uh time permitting let's put it this way uh this presentation uh will be shared uh, the recording will be shared by uh, by email to all of you, but it will also be on our YouTube channel called Reach Law Talks later on. So there it will be until end of time. So you can always have have a, a look at it there if if you don't or if you lose the the recording link or something like that. And in all cases, of course, feel free to comment and provide feedback and tell us where we need to focus more and uh, and so forth. We'll be happy to look at that feedback and, and make ourselves better. We are here for you, of course. So maybe just as a, a introduction or comment in the beginning is that this will be a one webinar or many. So this is the first webinar we have, uh, if you will, natively providing uh, through REACH law. And it will not be the last. So in this webinar, we will not have time to go through all the intricacies of the K-REACH regulation or, or related chemical regulations in, in South Korea, uh, such as the more technical aspects of doing a, a lead registration dossier and stuff like that. that. That is beyond the scope of this presentation. But rest assured that we will be providing those type of webinars in the near future. So stay tuned and be, make sure, be sure to be subscribed to our a newsletter where you will be getting these invites, of course, in the future also. Okay, so the agenda will be packed as as usual. We we'll try to uh, let's say squeeze this into 60 minutes. Uh, easier said than done. Uh, so if we go a bit over time, please uh, bear with us there. And of course, you can always watch watch the recording later on. So we we'll start with an overview of the uh, K reach regulation. And then uh, we'll look at the pre-registration, what that means, who can pre-register, what are the substances within that scope, before then looking at the, the registration uh, process itself, and more specifically the 2024 deadline, which is coming in uh, just about one year from now. And then also something that is uh, a fairly new, a new process for changing only representative in, uh, in uh, for South Korea, uh, K-REACH, uh, and what that entails. So it, just a bit of a spoiler, it's becoming easier to change ORs uh, starting next year. Then we'll have some conclusions before going to the Q&A at the end. Okay, so reach law for those of you 
who know us, you know this already, but uh, I'll nonetheless just give you a very quick tour of REACH law. So we focus on REACH and REACH-like chemical regulations globally. So this is now, of course, also encompassing K-REACH in South Korea. And has, has been do doing so for a while already, but, uh, but nowadays we have our own, own office and our uh, own people there so we can natively support K-REACH compliance for our clients. So we have uh, offices around the world. You can see them on the, on the map here. We have our headquarters here in, in Helsinki in Finland, but we also have offices in the UK, in Istanbul, Turkey, and New Delhi as, as we're from uh, Gagan is joining, and then so in South Korea, of course, and a small one in Brussels also. We provide a very comprehensive set of uh, market access services for our clients when it comes to chemical uh, substances, chemical products that they want to place on the market. So we, we uh, provide only representative services. We provide uh, help with submitting the regulatory dossiers, co-registrations, lead registrations, authorizations, you name it. Everything essentially related to these chemical regulations is, is what we support our clients with. On top of that, we also provide uh, training, uh, support, compliance audits, and, and so forth. And the more let's say, demanding work such as public affairs and advocacy type of services. But more specifically regarding K-REACH and, and K-OSHA in, in uh, Korea, we'll focus on K-REACH today, is of course providing only representative services through our office, uh, local office there, REACH Law Korea Limited, where we provide them pre-registration, pre registration, registration uh, services for co-regs, lead regs, and also this exemption uh, requests, if you will, for different cases, P ports, polymers, etc. Uh, SDS services, consultancy, and, and of course, training. Training being, the, for example, what you are getting now as part of this webinar. And uh, so what, one of our, maybe uh, my mantra has been that we're trying to demystify Cambridge. I feel that it's been a lot of uh, misconceptions, a lot of uh, 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 contradictions, uh, this and that with K-REACH, and of course the language barrier has been quite quite difficult in some cases. So we try to unravel the whole thing for you, the audience here today and in our future webinar uh, series, of course. So just to making it easier and, uh, and as understandable as possible for, for you and our, our clients, of course. And just wanted to highlight, I mentioned this briefly, but we also have a YouTube channel where you will find this webinar also later on it's called reach law talks uh, i invite you to have a look uh, subscribe if you uh, like the uh, content and of course you can always give thumbs up uh, the latest webinar there is on on uh, public affairs and uh, advocacy uh, intro into that what it means in the eu and the, and the uk so if you fancy have a look please head over to reach law talks but as i said this webinar will be there also in in the coming weeks maybe next week before christmas i think Okay, uh, also as we typically have uh, as part of our webinars, we just give you a quick tour around the world, what's happening essentially with, the, with these uh, REACH and REACH-like chemical regulations. So K-REACH, of course, will be the topic today, so I'll not talk about that, but just you know that the, in the EU REACH, we have the REACH review process undergoing. We'll see how that pans out. It, will, it is a bit delayed due to the new commission coming in next year. So it's not on top of the agenda, but there's a lot of things happening in, under EU reach. So it really pays, pays to give attention to, to that regulation, I, as I think you all know by now. In the UK, it's a bit uh, different. There we have the, uh, uh, the transitional registration uh, deadlines have been postponed. That, that is now in law. So the next deadline is 26, uh, 28 and 30, depending on the tonnage ban, the hazards of the substances. So, so that is going forward and we're looking forward to the alternative transitional registration model that is uh, going to be published next year at some point as part of a, a public consultation. Turkey, well, I think you've, uh, if you've read our news uh, letters, you know that the, uh, there's a lot going on in Turkey. And uh, at the moment, we're looking at uh, the deadlines being postponed uh, with uh, quite quite some years, so uh, 26, 28, and 30 is what is on the on the uh, agenda now for Turkey. But that is not yet finalized into law, so we're waiting for 
for more information on that in Turkey. And we will have a, actually a webinar on that on Thursday, so in just a, uh, just in two days. So please uh, feel free to sign up to for that webinar also if you're interested in Turkey and the latest developments. And just also like to highlight that we there is uh, something brewing in Ukraine with regards to what we call Ukraine reach whereby there would be a pre-registration type of a uh, process kicking into force next year. Obviously, it's dependent on many things, uh, but uh, that is something that they're aiming for uh, implementing starting next year. But we're following that very closely. So please, uh, again, su subscribe to our newsletters and you, you should be, uh, be uh, kept well informed of these developments. And India Reach is something that is uh, currently pending, but uh, Gagan is, is following that development very, sh very uh, closely. And if there are any further developments that nudging ahead, then you will be the first to know also. So a lot of things happening, including K-Reach. But today, K-Reach is our subject. And just before we go into the meat and potatoes of this uh, webinar, just a usual uh, disclaimer and copyright. So any actions you may take based on this presentation is of course on your own responsibility and risk. So no representation or warranties are made with regards to completeness or accuracy of the contents of this presenta presentation and we will accept no liabilities whatsoever. And of course the, the customary copyright notes. So that pleases the lawyers. So now we can go into the main content. So, uh, and just uh, just to conserve a bit of bandwidth, as we have a lot of people uh, joining in from around the world, I'll just turn off the camera and just focus on on the slides and the uh, narration, if you will. Okay, so K reach and the overview thereof. So the K reach regulation came actually already into force in. 2015, so it's been in force already for quite quite some years. And the main authority uh, who is uh, overseeing this uh, regulation is the Ministry of Environment in South Korea, the MOE uh, acronym you will see littered across this uh, presentation. And the whole compliance process, uh, if you will, started actually July in 2015 when the uh, Ministry of Environment announced that there would be 510 priority existing substances, sometimes called priority existing chemicals. That's the PEC, the C at the end of PEC. We, we call it substances to be more, more consistent across the different regulations. But these 510 PEC substances were uh, had a registration deadline of uh, end of June 2018, by which time all of these had to, 510 substances had to be uh, registered. Uh, due to some some uh, inconsistencies and and really not taking into account these other substances that were not PEC substances, there were actually a significant amendment made in 2018 to to this K reach regulation, whereby a system was introduced for existing substances of pre-registration and transitional registration uh, system, whereby you would have to register by a set registration deadline if you were construed as being an existing substance. And we'll talk about this later on in more detail. So really the amendment in 2018 brought the uh, the whole key, uh, K reach regulation much closer to EU reach, UK reach and, and KKDIK in, uh, as it, it looked at these uh, broad requirements for all substances essentially on the, on the South Korean market. As with EU reach and the uh, reach like chemical regulations elsewhere, the scope is very broad. We'll have another look at that in a few slides. And also important to know if you are not in uh, South Korea, and but you are a manufacturer or a producer, then you can appoint an only representative in South Korea to take care of these uh, regulatory obligations, such as pre-registration and registration and, and so forth. But this will be discussed uh, in more detail in this presentation also. So this was just the intro and background, if you will. So the basic requirements for market access in, in uh, South Korea with regards to K-REACH is that you have two types of substances that you essentially distinguish between. You have existing substances, and I'll 
go through the definitions in a while, and new substances. So existing substances that are manufactured in or imported into South Korea at one ton or more annually would need to be pre-registered and registered by these ap applicable registration deadlines. We'll come back to that also. However, these new substances that were manufactured or imported in, in South Korea, into South Korea at 100 kilograms or more per year, it should say per year, uh, we'll correct that, uh, need to be then registered before being placed on the South Korean market. So, so there are different requirements depending on type of substance, but we'll come back to that. So the legal text of what you need to consider when you are are wondering how to comply with the uh, K-REACH regulation is actually a set of three, three legal texts. There are other uh, legal documents, legal texts that, that ties into the whole thing, but these are the main ones. So the, the Act on Registration and Evalu Evaluation of Chemicals. So this is the main K-REACH text. Then there's an enforcement degree to this K-REACH that has more definitions and annexes and forms and stuff, and as well as uh, an enforcement rule on this K reach, which have even further definitions and, and annexes and stuff. So you have to look at all these three legal texts side by side when, uh, when reading the K reach regulation. And just a note in some context, sometimes uh, K reach is referred to as AREX, AREC, uh, based on the uh, first letters in the uh, name of the uh, law or the act in this case, but in this presentation, we'll just call it K-REACH because we, it just does not, it just uh, it doesn't only encompass the uh, act, but also the decree and the rule as we looked at. So keep that in mind, but all of these together are called K-REACH in this presentation. So if we look at some uh, definitions used in this presentation are good uh, definitions to understand in, in general. I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, I invite you to screenshot or look at the recording later on if you want to have more information. But as uh, mentioned, you distinguish between two types of substances. You have the exi existing substances, sometimes also referred to have, as phasing substance. We'll, we'll call them existing substances in this presentation. <clears throat> so these are sometimes also go, called existing chemicals. So a lot of, a lot of uh, synonyms, if you will. So these are substances that have been on the uh, South Korean market before the entry into force of the K-REACH regulation and, and are typically identified with this KE number. We'll have a look at that later on. There are some exceptions to this, but we'll not go into details here. Then we have these PEC substances, which are also existing substances, but these are a subset constituting the 510 priority existing substances that were subject to this earlier registration deadline. <clears throat> Uh, regard, regardless of the tonnage ban, as, as long as you are at one ton or more, you have to register by this deadline. The new substances, which are also called uh, non-phasing substances, are any other substance that is not an existing substance, including PEC substances, of course. They, they are also existing substances, so are not considered new substances. So, so this is a very important distinguish, uh, or, or let's say a, a precursor when you start defining what do I have to do for, for my substance to comply with K-REACH. You have to first understand, is it an existing substance or a new substance? And I'll, I'll show you later on uh, how, how you can uh, find out. The K number is, uh, as mentioned, it's uh, given to existing substances and it's available for search of this chemical information IT system website that we'll have a look at that. Then uh, in some, some of the slides you will see this near, so that means the National Institute of the Environment there in, in charge of, of all kind of, of uh, like uh, generating information in the background and setting criteria for different pollutants and so forth. But, but they are an, an intricate player in this, in this uh, field, if you will, of K-REACH. Then we have this KIKO, uh, I, I call it KIKO, maybe some, some have said CISO, but uh, KIKO sounds better. So it's the uh, Chemical Substance Information Communicate, Commun Communicative Organization, what a tongue twister there, but essentially it, uh, it means a CIF. If you are familiar with the term CIF from EU-REACH, then, then this is essentially 
that's a, like a substance information exchange forum. So companies wishing to register the same substance jointly must then first join this Kiko, and then in that Kiko uh, organize themselves to cooperate in preparing for the uh, joint registration, meaning that they usually make a consortium out of it. Polymer definitions uh, are essentially uh, similar to that of EU reach. Uh, so you have to have a one kind of monomer unit that is repeating and it has to have uh, uh, repetitive numbers of these uh, uh, monomer units in the, each molecule, then three monomer units uh, at least have to be in this uh, polymer to be construed as a polymer and so forth. You can again screenshot this if you want to have the uh, full text. And in some cases uh, we we see this prior to control substances. This is actually under the Chemical Control Act, so it's not under carriage per se, but these are, these are substances for high risk for human health and the environment. And it's, it's a bit like the chemical, uh, sorry, the accandidate list under EU reach, albeit not, not quite the same in, in South Korea. We will not cover the, uh, the uh, Chemical Control Act in this presentation. So just be aware. In the future presentations and webinars, yes and how that ties into the greater picture of chemical controls in, in uh, South Korea. So as mentioned uh, in this presentation, we'll talk about substances instead of chemical substance or chemical, because that's the way we learned how to define a substance in the EU reach. So we just want to use the same terminology across these different regulations. And uh, also, as mentioned, uh, we'll talk about the existing substance instead of phasing substance and new substance instead of non-phasing substance because I think existing substance is more descriptive. So if we look at the uh, uh, process of K-reach, so we have these different types of substances. So we have the ex existing substances, we have the new substances, we have these PEC substances that were a subset of uh, of the existing substances. So what, what do you have to do to comply with the K-REACH regulation? Or if you would have to put everything in one slide, this would be the slide. So for existing substances, you can, under certain conditions, you can still late pre-register these substances. However, if you are on the market in South Korea, and Gagan will talk about this in more detail, but if you are on the market in South Korea with these substances, then you likely were you already have pre-registered these between 1st of, of January and 30, uh, end of June 2019. So essentially the deadline for pre-registration was 2019, albeit late pre-registrations are possible for cases where you are eligible for these later registration deadlines, which we'll talk about, uh, and you're placing the substance on the South Korean market for the first time at one ton or more. So late pre-registration, uh, feeds into the registration process, whereby you have the registration and, and hazard review as part of that process, as well as risk man assessment. As part of this hazard uh, review, your substance may be uh, uh, identified as a substance subject to intensive controls. So we'll, we'll not talk about that in, in any detail in this presentation, but in future webinars, yes. Uh, the registration deadlines, Gaga will also talk about this in more detail, but these are the deadlines for uh, for these uh, existing substances, these transitional reg uh, registration deadlines. So the first deadline has already surpassed. So that was end of 2021 for CMR substances at one ton or more, or any other substances at more than a thousand tons. But the next deadline, which is coming end of next year, is for substances over a hundred tons, but less than a thousand tons, and of course not not CMR substances. But then we have a, a subsequent deadline in 27, end of 2027 for, for 10 to 100 ton substances. And then the last deadline for these existing substances uh, eligible for this uh, transitional registration deadlines is end of 2030 for one to 10 ton substances. So this is the process and uh, for for the risk assessment part, this is like a CSR. It applies to if you are registering a substance at 10 tons or more. From this process, which we will not cover in this webinar, there might be additional processes depending on the type and hazards of the substance, such as authorization restriction and, and prohibition, complete 
of, of the substance, but this will not be covered in this presentation. We will focus on essentially this workflow going to, to registration. We will not go into hazard review in detail. We will not go into risk assessment in detail. We will cover the basics in this webinar and with a focus of what, what's, what we have to do for the next deadline, end of next year. Okay, so that was existing substances at one ton or more. Then we have these PEC substances. Well, they have to be registered. Uh, if you are now placing a PEC substance on the market for the first time, you have to register it before you place it on the on the uh, Korea market at one ton or more. So you you are not eligible eligible for the pre registration. If you have a new substance, meaning it's not an existing substance at uh, uh, over 100 kilograms, you have to submit an inquiry. It's not the same as, as a reach inquiry per se, but it does mean that you check and verify if there already is a joint submission for this new substance in, in this case. And then you go into the workflow of registering and uh, uh, getting your registration. And you have to have a registration in place before you place the substance on the, this new substance on the market in South Korea at 100 kilograms, or more per year. But then we have this final category of new substance less than 100 kilograms per annum. These are, for these you require a notification, which is a fairly simple procedure. You And you are subject to monitoring, meaning you have to report annual volumes and, and this, this sort of information to your local uh, environmental agency. Uh, certain substances going into this workflow if they are high, of high risk and wide dispersive use, uh, not uh, then then you may be uh, subject to a registration. If you are low volume and wide dispersive use, that's a, a bit of a uh, let's say contradiction per se. But this is what the, the legal text and uh, the text says in general. So this is the procedure proce uh, procedure for getting your substances registered, notified according to the KREACH regulation as an overview. So as with EU-REACH, uh, there are exemptions, obviously, to, to the whole scope of the K-REACH regulation, meaning you're completely out of the scope of, of uh, uh, the reg regulation. And then you have substances which are within the scope, but you are exempt from pre-registration, registration, all these notification requirements. So, for example, biosada products, uh, substances, and products are exempt. This was one of the questions uh, we received in advance. So that's that's an answer. And pesticides, for example, radioactive materials, and so for munitions, explosives, and of course there are also uh, defense exemptions that can be applied. Uh, we'll not go into those in detail. Then there are these substances, uh, as mentioned, as are being uh, inside scope of the k reach regulation but you are exempt from these uh, registration notification and, and uh, pre-registration requirements in some cases like if you have a substance existing in nature so this sub uh, substance is occurring in nature you do not have to register these but you have to prepare a self-declaration and have it ready at your end in case of an inspection so all of these you, you uh, self-declare, you don't have to pr provide that declaration to anyone unless asked for. However, for other uh, type of substances such as intermediates, uh, uh, and substances which are completely exported from, uh, from uh, Korea overseas, so outside of Korea, then those you can and p port type of substances substances uh, under for uh, research and development type of activities these can be exempt from these registration requirements notification pre-registration and so forth but you have to submit this exemption uh, request to the ministry and they will get back to you within 30 days with with this uh, granting you do it before first import or manufacture, of course, for these type of substances. And then there are special provisions for, for intermediates, meaning you have lesser data requirements. And actually, you also have these special uh, lesser data requirements for, for uh, polymers. But we will not go into, into very much detail there, because that's, uh, that's opening another can of worms, which we'll deal with in a separate webinar. So unlike the EU REACH 
regulation currently and of course UK reach and K reach and so forth. K reach actually requires companies to register polymers that are not polymers of low concern. So not polymers of low concern. If you are a polymer of low concern, you can seek an exemption from uh, the registration requirements and, and uh, be done with it. But if, if you are not a polymer of low concern and you place this on the market in uh, Korea, if, whether it's an existing or a new substance, so existing at one ton or more, or a new substance at 100 kilograms or more annually, then you will have to register it according to the process we just looked at. And, and Gagan will also uh, look into this, uh, like the uh, registration process in more detail. So that's very, very important to know. And the, this is the biggest, I would say, uh, or one of the bigger, bigger differences between the K-REACH regulation and, and the EU-REACH. Of course, EU-REACH may have this uh, requirement to register polymers in, in, uh, in the future due to this REACH review, but that is to be determined how that kind of is, hap uh, is uh, manifested in practice. We have these different Korean authorities and roles. Uh, we have the Ministry of Environment near as mentioned, uh, the Ministry of Environment is the uh, competent authority. Then we have the NIR, who is managing this re uh, the registrations. Then we have KECO, Environmental um, uh, Korea Environment Corporation, which manages pre-registrations. When we have uh, Ministry of Environment, oh, sorry, Employment and Labor, who, who looks at hazardous substances and supervises those. We have, of course, the local environmental offices. We have KCMA, the uh, Korea Chemicals Management Association that provides certain certifications, and of course, customs who checks and supervises and inspects at the border whether your substances are complying or not, if you are importing into Korea. And being mindful of the time, I'll just uh, speed up a bit. So, as with EU REACH, we have, there is a, a K REACH IT system. We, we call it the K REACH IT system to, to uh, just to standardize again the uh, the naming here. So this is a system, online system, whereby you submit all your dossiers, pre-registration, registrations, exemption requests, etc. And it's done online. And it's of course, everything is in Korean language as well as the documents or, or the uh, dossiers you are submitting. Uh, th this, is, uh, this is not like uh, REACH IT in the sense that you actually uh, compile the, the dossier inside the, the system so you, you don't use a Euclid but you use everything is online so it's more similar to the Turkish KKS system than, than REACH IT. Uh, the uh, system also contains information on chemicals so you can actually search that and, and to log in to submit any of these dossiers and so forth you actually have to register with the system and you this can only be done by Korean companies or Korean based entities or, or persons. So when you submit these dossiers and provide information, you, you do it in this uh, implementation panel where you can search for exemptions, notifications, look at joint registrations, joint, joint registrations, appoint ORs, we'll look at that in just a while, register substances and do these declarations, but this is for the Chemical Control Act, so we'll not talk about that. But this section requires login, whilst this part you can search uh, on the public side of this website. So if you want to have a look at what, whether your substance is an existing or new substance, then you will always need a CAS number. If you don't have a CAS number, you cannot, it will be a new, new substance by default. So this is uh, proving sometimes a bit difficult because some EU substances may not have a CAS number. So in those cases, we re recommend, of course, you, you apply for a CAS number, but in that case, you will most likely be uh, uh, looked at as a new substance in under Korea, unless you can find a, a descriptive CAS number, which is already under as an existing substance. But that's a complete separate to topic for which we will not talk about here today. So you can find the links here to the system. There's a, a Korean language uh, interface, but there's also an Engli English language interface, and only this chemical search is available in English, or everything else is, is in Korea. But you can, of course, use Google Translate or whatever to, to translate some of that text. So, if you, as an example, if you look at the uh, uh, searching for propene, uh, you enter the uh, input, the uh, CAS number, 
click search and it spits out your substance uh, here as a result. So you can see that it has a K, uh, K, um, KE number, I'll just call it K number, KE number, but it doesn't say anything else on this row. It means that it is an existing substance and you can, if you now would, for example, be placing propene for the first time on the Korean market at one ton or more, you could uh, at less than a thousand tons, you could uh, you would be eligible for uh, late pre-registration. But then if we look at sodium hydroxide, which is a PEC substance, you will see this when you search for it input, you see the result. It is a K KA uh, substance, so it is an ex existing substance, but it says also that it, there is no grace period for registration, which means it is a PEC substance because the registration deadline was already in 2018, end of 18. So the PEC list is available as an annex to the regulation. And this is just an excerpt showing uh, sodium hydroxide being on this list. So for, for this substance, you could not be registered anymore if you would be placing it on the Korea market for the first time at one ton or more. But then you could also have the new substance, which is the case where, for example, you get a new cast number. It's not found on the database here. I just put in something one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight because I knew there would be no match. So you get the result, which means it's empty, meaning it's a new substance. It's a non phasing substance. They have got, go to through the new substance procedure, meaning if you place more at 100 kilograms or more per annum on the South Korean market of this substance, you have to register before you start placing it on the market of manufacturing in South Korea. Okay, so that's how you look at existing and uh, new substances. And I can already tell you that we will go over time. So sorry about that. Anyway, there are different uh, options for you. If you are a company outside of South Korea that are that is uh, exporting chemicals to South Korea, you have options for compliance. So one of option is, of course, that you have a local entity as an importer. You have a customer as an importer who takes care of these k reach obligations. That's fine. Then you don't have to worry about it, albeit in some cases that may not be uh, very uh, efficient. We'll come back to that. Then, of course, you have the other option of uh, as a non-South Korean manufacturer formulator or producer, as it says in the uh, legal text, you can appoint an only representative for carriage purposes to take care of these importer obligations. So it can be a combination of both. In this uh, few next slides, we'll look at the OR option. So uh, as with EU reach and the uh, other EU reach like chemical regulations, the carriage re uh, provides this possibility for this non-South Korean manufacturers and producers, including formulators, to sign an only representative to, to care take care of these k reach obligations. So this is now, for example, all the pre-registrations, registration notifications we looked at earlier and, and reporting and whatnot, and uh, confidential business information requests and so forth, will not cover that in this presentation. Uh, the uh, only representation is defined in Article 38 of the k reach Act. Uh, and an only representative can essentially be a natural legal person that is resident in South Korea. And this means a company, for example, based in South Korea, such as Reach Law Korea Limited. So to manage these only representative responsibilities, the OR should have, of course, the necessary competences in place, such as, of course, the needed legal, chemical, technical, uh, IT organization, other skills that are needed for, for maintaining compliance of the only representative. What, but what is curious is that actually in this Article 38 of the uh, Kerry Act, so the first regulation in this three-part series we looked at earlier, the OR qualifications or, or criteria, if you will, are not are not specified in the in the legal text. It only says that you have to be this uh, essentially resident of of the uh, of South Korea to be able to become an OR. But of course, to comply. To be able to comply, you have to have these necessary skills. So in, K, in EU reach and uh, KKDIK, UK reach and so forth, you have this text that defines, albeit in broader, broad terms, the competences required for an OR. Whilst in South Korea, that is not the case. But you still need the same competences, of course. 
this is the uh, article. I will not go into details here. Uh, I just uh, highlight that actually what's different from uh, EU reach, for example, is that you actually have to get permission from uh, the Ministry of Environment to become an OR. Uh, and we'll look at that in, in, uh, in just a few slides. Okay, so I invite you again, if you want to have a look at this uh, legal text, which is an unofficial translation, please, uh, please feel, feel free to look at the recording later on. So if you look at the uh, examples of uh, whether you have uh, your customers as importers taking care of compliance or an only representative configuration, uh, I here show you the, uh, the results of either strategy. So the first case is case of import by customers. So in this case, of course, say you have three customers for your substance X. Uh, you, you have three customers. You don't have an OR. So what this means is that if these are eligible for, or for registration, which I assume is the case, then of course, these would have to each and every importer as a legal entity register this substance X individually. So that would be three times the effort uh, and uh, cost and time lost, essentially. Whilst if you appoint an only representative in South Korea to centrally take care of these k uh, importer obligations, then by having this one only representative register once and covering these customers for substance X, then you get by with just one registration, for example, one pre-registration registration, and you cover all of these other uh, uh, importers of your substance, your customers as downstream users. They are no longer essentially concern, considered as importers, they're more considered as downstream users. Hence, they do not have themselves the importer obligations, meaning they do not have to register because they're covered by this one single only representative for this substance X who has taken care of these regulatory obligations. So for one time effort, you can cover as many downstream users as, as you want. And the good thing of having an OR is that of course, uh, these, uh, these downstream users are not, uh, how, how should I say, put this politely, they don't have much choice because they are not the holders of the registration assets they have to buy from someone who is a holder of registration assets. So by having an OR, you as a non-South Korean manufacturer producer, you, you are in control of that asset and they have to buy it from you or someone else who has registered the substance versus this case where they could essentially, if they have a, if you have a competitor, they could buy the same substance under their own, the same registration uh, uh, if they get the, the uh, substance X at, at, as, at a reduced fee, for example. So this really makes the whole supply chain much more efficient, especially if you have several customers in South Korea in this case. So putting an OR is absolutely beneficial. It get, grants you more control, makes your customers happy because they don't have to do uh, jump through the hoops of uh, registering these substances and so forth. So win-win, I would say. How to appoint? Uh, you uh, essentially you first uh, try to identify and find a K-Reach only representative and, and look no further because Reach Law is providing these services, of course. But you can choose whomever you want. But then the the appointee, so the manufacturer or producer outside of Korea, uh, goes through the appointment process whereby you provide information on what substances are to be covered, then you have an OR agreement, and most importantly, you have an appointment letter. Then the OR itself prepares these documentations and submit this information in the KREACH IT system, including a business certificate showing that we are actually, a, if REACH law is doing this, that we are a business incorporated in South Korea. And of course, then the uh, appointment letter and everything has to be in the Korean language. And what happens next is that the uh, the, uh, the uh, chemical, uh, sorry, Korean Environmental Corporation then checks uh, or this uh, application for becoming an OR either accepts it or rejects it. If they, if they reject, probably there's some inconsistencies in the application and you can fix that and resubmit. And once 
it is accepted. Usually this takes like a week, seven days. You will get a, a certificate showing that the appointment has been done. So you are completed. And this takes, depending on the case, one to three weeks. Can of course take longer depending on how long the uh, agreement phase and such takes. But the uh, process with the authorities is, is around like one week, one, two weeks. And this is uh, the, the KECO KREACH only representative certificate that they provide, uh, which is an official document uh, saying that, yes, now you are an only representative for this and that company, for this and that substance. So this is different from, from EU reach. And uh, I've been speaking way too long, uh, and this will be my last slide before handing over to Gagan and uh, said sorry for going uh, over time. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick matrix between EU reach and K reach and just highlight the differences here. So, OR appointment, no approval is needed, whilst in K reach approval is needed. Pre registrations is the same, but it, there are only for existing substances under K reach. Registration, yes, we have this. Simply, we're not going into details about simplified registration, just to be aware that you have to register new substances at 100 kilograms or more or new exist, oh, sorry, existing substances at, at uh, one ton or more. So there's the dis distinction. Otherwise, it's uh, more or less the same. Polymer registrations, we talked about that. Polymers that are not uh, PLCs uh, require registration, albeit those can be done with reduced data sets. Will not be covered in this uh, presentation in detail. And exemptions uh, apply. So in, in Korea, there's you. You don't have specific ex exemptions per se, like P board, this and that. You you have to apply for this through this centralized process, if you will. So it's it's a bit same, but but still a bit different. Joint registration. Uh, the uh, way or the uh, approach applies also in South Korea. Are the exemptions are uh, available, but they're done under the exemption process in South Korea, as, as looked at briefly uh, no product notifications per se but the uh, su but certain substances as part of these are required but that's again the chemical control act so we'll not cover safety data sheets yes in uh, k reach uh, or the broad broader scope including k osha you have to submit these to the authorities we don't have to do with it this in, in uh, eu no say as if sds certification per se is required no are any uh, dossier reviews by certified per persons required such as in Turkey for example. So that's why we have these categories also here. Okay, uh, long story short I will hand over to Gagan and uh, Gagan sorry for being <laughs> slower than anticipated but uh, it's a complicated topic so I hand over the uh, word to you and just tell me when to change slides. Yes, thank you Frederick. Do I think uh, you have set uh excellent base for the overview the overview of k reach is i think most most uh, complex uh, like understanding uh, the definitions and we have been experiencing eu reach and then uh, then turkey and then uk and then so these are uh, a similar uh, concept but then i think uh, it's important to 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 get this overview correctly uh, which means that you you start with the right step uh, for the registration so uh, i think i will i will focus on uh, the practical handling of your process now so uh, we can proceed to the next slide so as as we mentioned that this pre-registration is uh, common since you have been handling this uh, reach like compliances but in uh, in uh, k reach it is also termed as notifications and so it is uh, similar what we are uh, if we are using p registration so and you see your customers are asking for what is your notification number or pre notification then they are essentially uh, uh, requiring your p registration number so that is something uh, important for you to know next slide please and uh, uh, of course we have covered this uh, timelines but I will uh, I will also repeat uh, since we are uh, in the registration phase and uh, and if I look at the start of this process then um, 
uh, this July of 2018 for uh, importing more than one ton of those uh, those priority existing chemical uh, uh, substances which are uh, which are need to be registered now so you no longer uh, make this pre-registration so the identification step is very important for you for a company to have your k-reach inventory and i think it's the most important step uh, what uh, frederick has covered earlier with this uh, website so uh, you need to understand your inventory and if you think that there are any pec substances there is no grace period then it will not it will go under direct registration which we will see in the next slides and this uh, existing substances which are uh, not not a pec meaning that those are those are something which korea would like to have registration first but these are the substances where you can access korea market even now uh, you can do a late P registration. There are conditions that uh, uh, that you need to be in the same tonnage band. Uh, uh, for example, that you are exporting you are exporting more than <clears throat> more than thousand tons uh, already now, and you would like to make a pre-registration. That's not possible. So you need to look into the deadline, which is uh, for more than thousand tons. It is. It is 31st of December 2021. So you need to look into the process of uh, to access the market and make a process simplification uh, that you need to pre-register first in the lower tonnage band, meaning 100 to 1000, and then directly register in the higher tonnage band. But we will all these uh, all these uh, specific cases that you have we request to discuss with Reach Law separately. But if you are already selling in one to 10 tons uh, annually from its a calendar year, January to December or 10 to 100 tons, 100 to 1000 tons, then uh, we recommend to make a late P registration as soon as possible. And uh, then we have more clarity on where we stand and we would be in the position uh, and you would get more information on what, what it would cost you for registration. So this is for existing substances. Uh, you can, of course, make a late P registration if if your volumes are within this band. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, we call it late because uh, the the original deadline is uh, has been passed. But then uh, it's also important that uh, companies should access the market, and uh, and we. Uh, we need to access this case by case but uh, the late p registration is allowed for the existing substances and uh, as i mentioned in the beginning that you need to see that the quantities uh, are uh, are within the within this uh, band and deadline has not passed so so this this i covered uh, already and uh, please be careful with the decision making process and uh, please involve some expert to decide and uh, of course importer your customer is uh, is aware of this so but make this decision of late p registration very carefully so that's the message uh, next slide please so this is uh, only for the substances which are existing which has this ke number and uh, which uh, you see that uh, there is no uh, grace period is not expired so that is where uh, you can do this late P registration, but it is uh, for for anything else. Uh, it's not the option for you. You need to apply for direct registration. Next slide, please. And uh, so this slide uh, will give you the information that what you need uh, to make a P registration, uh, so-called late P registration. So this information, uh, these uh, six points that you see on this slide. Uh, I would say is a very important uh, uh, information uh, right uh, to for the authorities to understand what is coming to them uh, and which means that you need to and it's much more information what you have been experiencing with the uh, with EU reach and and other uh, KKDIK uh, pre-registration for example so it's it's much more information and it, it is uh, done in, in the IT system. So I would uh, recommend that you you uh, you collect this information correctly. And then uh, because uh, 
these updates to the notification of e-registration is also that we do uh, quite less during the registration so your information gathering process should be should be quite accurate and uh, you should need to involve your importers as far as for example uses are concerned uh, you you need to be careful when making this uh, uses uh, information for this pre-registration purpose and uh, and also you need to uh, see that your all the importer uh, that you do or conduct business with uh, you need to add this information if you if you are appointing an only representative so authority doesn't know who is the actual importer of your substance so you need they would like uh, in this uh, dossier uh, to include the actual importer uh, your customer in korea with their business id uh, all the information so that they can connect this company within the IT system through other other authority portals. So business ID is very critical. You cannot miss any details. So that's why I mentioned in the beginning that information collection and uh, gathering process will take time if you have uh, quite many substances to late be register. So handle this information correctly. And our recommendation is that uh, avoid uh, updates of this uh, notification because uh, um, you you will basically uh, spend a lot of uh, additional work and of course cost so do this correctly at the first space so you avoid less uh, updates on this dossier but this is done through the IT system as also mentioned that uh, there is no other software everything is this IT system which has everything embedded with these uh, with these fields so I think this is important and uh, and any change it is also that you need to notify this and update this in one month so this is also important that uh, communication with your with your consultant communication with your importer for the uses and for uh, for your sales people that they realize that there is a new customer so you have a good coordination so that uh, this uh, information if it's a new that needs to be updated within one month so it's it's really critical that you provide this information in time to your consultant uh, next slide please so this this is uh, i think important that the late registration uh, including all, all your uh, processes can be done by only representative so they will cover uh, this compliance on behalf of your uh, importers and your importers uh, are relieved from these k reach obligations and this is uh, what an OR can do for manufacturers as well as uh, as formulators and and those uh, companies next slide please so coming to the k reach uh, registration process i see that we will exceed this timeline i apologize uh, for this but uh, let me see if i can i will not rush but i will see that which of the slides i can uh, i can uh, pass so Next slide, please. So this is uh, the basic. I think uh, we have covered this timeline. Uh, I will not read the text, but I will uh, mention that these are the four tonnage bands for you to apply for registration. So the, for example, you have done the first step of uh, the OR appointment, and then you have done your pre-registration. Then we are looking at this uh, tonnage band for registration, and this is. Uh, this is same as you reach uh, when it uh, comes to the data requirements certain things are different we will see in the next slide but we are looking at a full substance uh, registration meaning that you have to uh, provide all the data that is required in the uh, regulation and then we have uh, on-site isolated intermediates this is something which is uh, definition wise it is similar to eu reach that you you isolate an intermediate uh, within the premises but then uh, uh, in KREACH, you can still uh, look into the exemption. So basically, you don't register this uh, isolated uh, on-site isolated intermediate. But with these control conditions, uh, 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 you can apply for exemptions. But we, we are only covering the registration in this presentation. If you have any anything uh, on this, uh, please contact us separately. And similarly, for transported isolated and if you are transporting this uh, intermediate from one side to another whether it's uh, within korea or uh, involving 
foreign uh, overseas companies then it's it's a basically transported isolated intermediate and there uh, the similar uh, registration will apply and there are certain uh, data requirements uh, different data requirements for tonnages and the conditions uh, must be satisfied as far as uh, the use is concerned and everything is done in in the of course in the Korean language in this IT system next slide please so uh, this slide I think uh, we have explained so you you are looking uh, we are looking at uh, the last three bands where the deadline has not passed and 100 to 1000 is the focus of this presentation but uh, you need to see that whether you are upgrading your quantities and your business is improving with Korea and these 10 to 100 would be going to 100 to 1000 then you are looking to uh, register by next year end of next year and all your registrations will undergo evaluation uh, meaning that this will undergo hazard review and risk management and then further controls will be uh, implemented that uh, that is not part again for this presentation but this is similar to understanding that what it what it contains and uh, how to control it further but existing substances uh, where the deadline has passed uh, you need to register directly you cannot uh, access market now but you will access market only with the registration number or you have other provisions to uh, lower your business uh, make a late fee registrations and then register but to do this uh, with proper consultation then the new substances uh, i think this is uh, that for more for more than 100 kilos you are looking for a registration and less than 100 kilos uh, it's a simple notification process where uh, the information is shared with the authorities so this is for the new substances uh, next slide please and uh, with the joint uh, submission concept uh, I will uh, see that it's a uh, it's the same uh, what other reach like uh, regulations are saying so if you have a same substance and there are lot, uh, lot many companies uh, if you see uh, from the SECO, which was explained earlier that there are many companies and uh, so you will gain from this uh, joint submission is is of course uh, that uh, uh, that you are safe and you will expect that your registration will be completed because there is one company which has uh, taking the leadership position and registering and uh, you will also get benefit of cost sharing but uh, this is also a complex process uh, when uh, the companies uh, are not uh, getting access and uh, they they don't have full access to uh, apply the registration because the moe we will see in the next slides that uh, uh, is something which is important that you need to have uh, you need, need to have uh, certain proof from the owner to be able to use and access this data but most of the most of the cases uh, this is going to be the joint submission but uh, if you are looking that you would like to you have an access of the data and you think that you, it's a cost effective for you even if you need to apply for certain uh, uh, testing then you can make an individual submission that's an opt out is possible uh, there are certain permissions that you need but this is something which is possible and uh, you need to have a solid uh, justification uh, to apply this individual uh, submission but more information is is covered in these articles 15 and 16 which is covering this uh, with with this uh, collaboration and uh, activities so but this is going to be the uh, I mean majority of companies would follow this process of joint submission next slide please and uh, uh, I uh, would like to mention that uh, if you're looking at the timelines uh, of course the first step is for the OR appointment which is uh, which we will see uh, but uh, also covered in the earlier slides then you are looking uh, late P registration uh, then uh, once you have completed your late P registrations you are part of this uh, forum and this is the most time consuming uh, and if you see from the three months to nine months is basically essentially this is the this is the I think uh, uh, most most challenging and most time-consuming process uh, to get your uh, uh, 
uh, access of this data and you then complete your registration so so it's very important to to start early understand what is uh, who is the lead and what are the cost sharing principles is this uh, valid uh, uh, and and whether there are you have other options to to register if you are not satisfactory with the cost or, or other parameters so that is something the decision making here is also important for you uh, that you you maintain your business with korea but this is very time consuming process uh, from our experience and then uh, once it is closed you you have uh, mainly the commercial obligations that you you know what is the fee and and then the co-registration is something we will cover you will see what it contains as a dossier as we have seen for the for the pre-registration so i will also share uh, what what co-registration dossier contains and then the, the five and six are more of your maintaining your dossier so of course there are certain obligations under k reach that you need to exchange information with the importers and these are done using a standard form template uh, like form 27 and form 26 and i would say that the form 26 uh, as far as similarity is concerned this is uh, this is from the e esds of the eu reach that you you provide certain exposure information uh, in this form to the to the importers uh, downstream users so this is also part of the enforcement as mentioned but this is a continuous process maintaining your dossiers uh, tracking updates uh, applying changes and uh, seeing that it is up to date so it's it's part of your obligation also so yeah this is basically a continuous process once you have registered next slide please and these are some of the information uh, you can uh, you can go through this uh, through the uh, later on but this is something which is a part of the information i will not read it but <clears throat> it is essentially covering the part of your information that you are providing in the dossier and and the ready to use information for your importers so they can maybe handle this chemical in the factory without going through the all the information which is in the dossier so so they are also having an obligation to uh, to manage their business uh, with your substance when they receive this form 26 so they need to adjust their adjust their handling of the chemical based on based on your information so so that's basically their obligation so this is uh, i think uh, important that you provide this as a legal requirement under k reach on this form 26 um, next slide please Uh, this is the dossier content of the core registration so if you see uh, i would say if you uh, have experience of eu reach uh, core registration so the blue boxes are what uh, you as a core registrant uh, uh, is going to uh, handle with your consultant and uh, this is the information number one is uh, your basic information uh, about your company and then number two is basically uh, your uh, identification of uh, your chemical uh, it's a substance identification so you need some testing here uh, spectras to conclude that uh, this is your substance uh, and it's the same substance that is being registered so this is number two is important to uh, identify that you are registering a correct substance uh, and uh, you need to prove this with this uh, with this uh, test reports of the substance and quantify that uh, this is the composition of your substance and uh, then uh, use classification is uh, what you have provided in the p registration uh, see that the information is consistent also here and number four five six seven and eight are more towards uh, what uh, you will access through the data cost we will see that uh, in the cost part but this is uh, provided by the main company the lead company who is uh, registering this uh, who is registering this uh, chemical so i would uh, not go into the details but there are uh, important uh, changes that there are different uh, you know, data requirements uh, if you see uh, in number five and six for example that uh, based on the uh, based on the hazard and the tonnage band you have uh, looking at 15 uh, uh, data items to 47 data items and if it's a not classified at all then it's a 15 that item so there is a 
and there is uh, something which you need to negotiate and uh, consultant must know that these are different requirements so you just cannot accept the letter of access fees uh, if this is not aligned uh, with the classification and the tarnishment including also the administrative cost it's just not the data so please uh, see this is uh, important for the negotiation and sometimes maybe it's easier to do the testing if it is not in vertebrate testing then you just and you you just uh, start uh, making your business case using a test house so uh, i would say that this is important uh, to understand that there's a different data requirements based on the hazards and uh, other information is similar coming from the safety data sheet like number seven and uh, and then uh, classification labeling is according to the ghs but it will it was basically the kosha what will be used and uh, and then for the number eight is your uh, is your chemical safety assessment and exposure scenarios which is more than 10 tons then you need to also lead will provide this and this is coming from the information reports and uh, and values that derive from the five six uh, as as uh, this is this is the main step for the re registration that you prove that the chemical is safe for use and you define conditions in this report how to use it for those uses and then basically it's 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 done through this uh, k-reach it portal and submission is done uh, and uh, you wait for the authority through the approval so this is a co this is a overall dossier content but we will basically focus on the co registrations which are blue in color next slide please so this uh, uh, NIER is 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 the authority which uh, does both completeness check and compliance check. So you will hear from them uh, if there are any changes, and you will need to make those uh, recommendations and make an update before you receive the registration number. And sometimes it's uh, that you receive the registration number, and then they make a compliance check. It depends. It depends uh, basically how how it is being prioritized by the authority. Next slide, please. So I will not go into the details, but we are providing this information that what are the data requirements uh, when it comes to the registration and it's start from physiochemical properties for each tonnage band and in the next slide you will see the uh, toxicity uh, requirements again uh, uh, tonnage band basis and then you have uh, uh, in the next slide you have the basically the environmental toxicity so so as you see from from the previous slide we have that english reports are acceptable if it is done under glp oecd glp uh, laboratory so so you don't need uh, a korean uh, uh, test so so this is important that english tests are acceptable to the authorities next slide please so uh, again uh, if you wish to place this PEC substance which is also that uh, you might find out through your inventory process and then you need to first register and once you receive your registration number then it is uh, uh, legally valid to get a first import of more than one ton uh, so uh, if that you find out anything you need to alert it your importer and uh, I think as a responsible enterprise you first apply for registration and then continue with your business uh, regardless of the time it takes to complete the registration but since it's a PEC it's few months that you will get uh, regain the access next slide please so this is one of the uh, statistics uh, please uh, I think we will be uh, providing this through our newsletters uh, blogs in 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 uh, uh, 2024 so this is from from 2021 deadline authorities providing certain statistics to track that how it is uh, affecting the registration so i would still see that uh, the new chemical substances are quite high so if any of you having new chemical don't don't wait and apply for registration so that's what the industry is opting for uh, so that you can get access to the market immediately and uh, sometimes the cost is not that much so please make a business decision in these cases and uh, other cases i think uh, are are following the deadlines so it's it's a pretty similar trend we see and you will see uh, this information coming in more from us uh, next slide please 
so this is the cost um, you would see and uh, we are also finding that the cost is uh, it's very nominal uh, so we are looking at some hundred euros uh, or dollars for your registration that is charged by the authority and uh, so this is uh, something that you need to pay per per substance to the authority and uh, and uh, to get your registration and then for updates also you need to make certain fee to be able to complete your uh, maintenance of the registration and exemptions you also need to pay the fee uh, when you apply for exemption so it's not free of cost it's uh, you need to pay the fee for ex exemption also next slide please so this is uh, for for you to understand the cost of course uh, we see that there are three parameters uh, to have the cost for you uh, to make the budgeting one is authority fee as you see from the last slide and this is again the per substance cost then the data fees is something which you would know uh, from your consultants uh, that uh, depends upon these factors which is mentioned how many companies have registered whether it's two or 200 what kind of submissions what kind of data you require whether you have a hazardous substance or or what is the status and uh, and whether this data is available or uh, or it has to be generated and then you are looking at uh, making the provisions for sharing uh, meaning you have to also share costs for the administrative part of uh, agreements project management and things like that so this is the most uh, i would say uh, bigger cost component for your registration and uh, and you can always negotiate because it's a room for negotiation and for negotiation i would recommend that you need to spend certain time and your consultants need some time to be able to negotiate and see which is the fair cost for you to make the registration but this is dynamic uh, i would say that uh, you may expect future cost also when it is evaluated so it's just not the one time cost you are paying uh, so so this is important that the additional cost may come May come in future when uh, your dossiers are getting evaluated by the authorities and and more testing is performed in future uh, as requested by authorities and as the third phase i think is the consultant fee uh, more or less it's a fixed and uh, compliance is uh, when it, it it you rely on your consultant registration so they are registered under k reach meaning that they need to maintain it uh, as as a company then uh, the annual maintenance and annual fees are also applicable so this is i think uh, based on how you interact and what what typical uh, parameters are there to to see that they are covering your requirements and uh, and these are justified next slide please uh, this is also that the penalties are uh, important that we will uh, see that uh, the Korean uh, uh, authorities are applying for penalties for repeat of uh, the offense and uh, they are also looking at the penalties on the sales uh, which is the surcharge so uh, it's just for the information purpose that uh, it might vary from uh, 7000 euros to 70000 euros and then when it comes to the sales it could be much more so please be uh, uh, when when you're looking at also the non-compliances then this is something you need to consider next slide please so uh, these are some of the tips uh, we are really uh, went ahead of the schedule but uh, i would uh, see that uh, these are some of the tips which i have covered in in my deliberations but appointing your or identifying right partner for you is still the important and identifying your inventory making uh, decisions on the pre-registrations uh, and check whether uh, the lead uh, has been appointed and they are registering the correct tonnage band and then we are looking at a joint uh, registration or you are looking for an individual but i would say it's a joint is is some something important and this will cover uh, uh, all your substance uh, sameness uh, which is same as the lead and other information which i have covered so so and then the post registration also i was covering so this is one of the tips i think uh, you can see it later and uh, stay up to date we are providing this website uh, it's in korean but then uh, you have translations now so uh, you can see that what's what's uh, coming next and we recommend you to follow this website next slide please now uh, important uh, i think information uh, that i would like to cover is is how 
and uh, the change is, uh, is something which you can consider uh, it's not it's not stopping you to decide uh, you as uh, uh, as a principal has a right to decision and i think this is one of the important decision which authority has uh, has announced recently and we would like to cover this in this uh, presentation next slide please so the OR change uh, as a background, uh, this slide uh, basically explains that uh, previously uh, the, the K-REACH uh, of course have a provision that you can uh, make a new only representative and you can dismiss your uh, old only representative. So you of course have a decision to make a new OR, but then what was uh, uh, what was not happening is that your assets or uh, your pre-registrations or registrations were not getting transferred from the old to the new OR and which means that the new OR uh, needs to repeat the pre-registrations or the registrations or uh, everything which has been done already they need to make a repeat and which is uh, commercially not viable and also for decision making but you as a principal deciding uh, access to the market you should have a right to choose the right partner and the authority should encourage that process uh, is as smooth as possible so uh, i would like to announce that uh, this process is uh, now uh, now possible so uh, if you if you see the next slide So this is uh, what uh, you will uh, be able to do from next uh, year, 4th of January. The the uh, this process will be uh, coming up in the IT system will be updated. Of course, there are practical uh, process which will happen, but then this IT system will be will be the this will trigger this transfer. So and and on the right hand side, I'm providing the insertion of the legal text. Uh, which is also providing this succession uh, provisions for uh, for the new OR, and this new OR uh, basically will uh, will get those uh, uh, pre-registrations, registrations, or exemptions, anything which has uh, done and has a number. So you you will not uh, you will have the same number in in your customer SAP systems that uh, your your certificates. Everything will remain same. You don't have to make any change. You just need to notify the new OR uh, through some communication and then there is a fee. Of course, it's a nominal uh, so you can decide immediately uh, this process if you are uh, not not uh, finding uh, easy to work with your current arrangement and you think that there are uh, there are options available to you. So so this is similar to EU reach uh, transfer and uh, it's a handshake procedure when you have a uh, uh, professional companies handling this process so I think uh, it's a handshake procedure so so next slide I think we also have a process for you but uh, if you're not happy um, as I said you can of course make this decision and this is the process change uh, which is uh, we are saying the preliminary as as reach laws experience that we do see that uh, this is gonna be the case you will first appoint uh, the new OR and uh, for example reach law korea and uh, if you have anything else then you, this is something you can consider then uh, this is the appointee that again you need to check with the old or about the terminations what kind of contracts you have and uh, what what your uh, what this contract says about this so you need to trigger that also and then uh, we are looking at three parties uh, the of course you as an appointee then new or uh, and the old or so there is a uh, for the for the new or there's an appointment letter and then for 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 the purpose of this transfer you need or transfer agreement which is a tri tri party this three party will be part of this uh, agreement and uh, if you think that this is something uh, challenging and you need to demonstrate your attempts that you have tried but this is not happening meaning that the old or is not not making certain uh, acceptance there but I think uh, all professional uh, enterprise would uh, accept your decision and should accept your decision unless until there are no issues with your relationships. But this is something uh, uh, I think uh, possible. But if not, then we need to see how we can help you sail through this process 
so then we need to have a contact uh, more information to be discussed with authorities but then um, looking at everything is done then the the process is that you submit this information through the authority the ministry of environment and then the new or can do everything so it's it's a submission by the new or uh, that is something i think uh, uh, important that the new or is and the principal that you is deciding and point is deciding this process not the old or so everything is done by new or uh, there is a form which needs to be filled this is the important uh, i think application and then this or appointment from from the third step or transfer agreement again from the third step then the certificate of or is coming from your appointment then you need to pay the fee and then you will get the approval from the keco uh, the ministry of uh, through this portal and then the ministry will accept uh, these transfers so you will see those uh, similar assets are coming to this uh, to us and you will then mean that this complete process is is what we call or changes complete done and uh, we expect that this process may take six to three to six weeks if uh, if this third step is is uh, coming through the process as we anticipate so so this is something to consider and uh, we are providing this information to the to the participants uh, next slide please so yes i think uh, frederick you you yeah. would eventually conclude and then yeah. again yes. apologies <laughs> Thank you, Gagan. And uh, as you can tell, this is our first time we have a webinar on Cambridge. So our uh, estimate of how long it would take was way off. But I hope you've uh, gotten a lot of information on on Cambridge and uh, demystified it a bit. But let's conclude with the conclusions. So, well, Cambridge has been been in force already, and the next deadline is end of next year. So, so now's the time to if you are planning on placing chemicals on the market or you're already placing these chemicals and, and uh, have an OR already and you're not happy with that OR, now is, now is your chance to, to, uh, to uh, how do you say, uh, level up and, and uh, take charge and maybe transfer to a better OR. Uh, we'll, we'll not say who that is, but maybe you can read between the lines. Anyway, so for doing that, and if you are planning to place these substances on the career market please first just do a check whether it's an existing substance or a new substance and whether you can benefit from these extended registration deadlines and also if you are eligible for this late pre-registration so i see a lot of questions on this this uh, topic in in the chat uh, i'll come back to that in just a second uh, you can appoint an or if you are a non-south korean manufacturer producer as we already covered and you can change very good more more uh, flexibility on the market that's that's always good for the end customer more options uh, you need to identify it as lead available already for your substance for the registration deadline and if they uh, submitted a, do a joint submission so is there a joint submission available and of course you need to determine how you want to register most likely you would want to register as current registrant but if there is no lead available then of course you would need to lead register and that will be a topic for a future webinar where we go this through this in more detail uh, then of course as uh, gagan already mentioned just to make sure that you check the letter of accesses what are the costs what are the related agreements what is covered very important as said because it, it may not be as transparent as you may have been used to and in any case of course please feel free to and do stay up with the Cambridge developments. As we can see, maybe you noticed in one of the earlier slides, actually one of the uh, uh, the decree, I think it was the decree or the rule was, I think it was the decree, it was actually updated today. So there's a lot of things going on in Cambridge, and so you need to keep on top of that. But following our webinars, I think you will have a good good uh, control of, of Cambridge going forward. So of course we stand ready to support you with your Cambridge efforts, whether you need an only representative or any of the other technical dossiers to be submitted, uh, exemptions, requests, and so forth. Please uh, do feel free to contact us at, for example, sales at reachlaw.fi or contact Gagan or myself directly. We'll have the contact details at the end of, of this presentation, and you had it in the beginning also. 
So for the Q&A, uh, considering that we are only a half an hour over time, I uh, usually I, I don't say this, but we will uh, do a Q&A document and share it with everyone. Because I see in the questions that we have uh, fairly specific questions, which may not be uh, relevant for all, but then uh, a few general questions that are probably relevant for everyone. So I think we have a, like 20, 20 plus questions that if it's okay with you, Gaga, we will next week uh, just pencil down the answers and send a Q&A document to everyone, considering that we are so much Yeah, it does feel overdue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so a very short Q&A and actually those of you who are quick on doing a screenshot, you will see the polymer exemption crit criteria because that, this was one of the uh, questions, or actually a couple of questions. What are uh, polymers that are exempt from registration and notification? But we'll come back and provide this in the Q&A document, so don't worry about it. So, I said, we're happy to help. Please feel free to, to reach out to Gagan and myself uh, if you have any further questions. Uh, if you need support, if you want to have a proposal, for example, for OR services, whatever, please do uh, reach out. And of course, a big thank you for your attention and for the people who have stayed with us to the bitter end, so to speak. Thank you very much. And sorry again for going over time. A lot of material to cover, but I hope you found it useful. And of course, thank you to Gaga and our team in, in Seoul for preparing the slides. So I wish you a very nice rest of the day and uh, have a great day. We'll keep in touch. Yes, thank you. Good day.